The Colorado State Land Board is the second largest landowner in Colorado. We generate revenue on the behalf of school children by leasing nearly three million surface acres. Our mandate is to support school children today and tomorrow by making sure our land stays healthy. Amendment 16 created the Stewardship Trust for lands that have the highest natural values. Through sound stewardship, we preserve trust land's long-term benefits. One site in particular illustrates the State Land Board's commitment to stewardship. La Botica. La Botica was actually documented as an archaeological site. You know, we realized that it had this really unique setup because you had this wide range of ecological conditions in, in a tight spatial area where you could come and get nettle and raspberry and certain mosses for glaucoma and things like that. And there's lots of evidence of, of many other peoples kind of moving up and down through that canyon who might have utilized La Boutica through time. Mm -hmm. The rock art um, kind of uh, suggests Navajo, Diné, Apache, uh, Comanche even. Um, kind of they often come behind others on a rock art panel and in size and scratch and augment um, other people's work before them. It's a really sacred place. Um, it'll be interesting to hear from tribes to see how much cultural memory they might have, or this is a place, a platform where they regain that memory. I'm from Ignacio, Colorado, and I am mute. My people lived in this area. Mawut and the Kuputa bands are make up the Southern Ute Indian tribe. And we moved up and down this, um, this corridor of the San Luis Valley and, and the Mawut, and sometimes we went out that way. But we here moved all the way, ranged all the way down to Abiquiu, New Mexico, traded in Taos to Mexico and wintered and moved with the seasons. To this day, I go out and I touch a tree or a rock, and I, you can connect to it. And you could still places you can connect to where the, the ancient spirits have been. You could still feel it. Yeah. Anything that's kind of to where that where they could dump the grain after they grind it. And this a lot of times they had a song. They used to sing, and stone grind this real good. This corn is good for food, and I like it. That's the song. Some medicinals that were here, that are here. The sage, the cedar, and the and the juniper, you know, that, that all of that plays a part in, um, in, in our daily life, how you use those things, you know. I would like to, to really kind of learn about the herbal. If our ancestors, our Native American ancestors used them, you know, just it'd be nice to keep passing it down. Her mother probably used them, and her great grand or my grandmother, you know, just down through the generations, they passed that lore down of the herbal remedies. From me and my people, um, cultural to me, you know, is everything, you know, the land and the water and the plants and the sky and how those things all fit together. When I was talking to them, praying to this tree, asking for thanks and about that way of life, about giving us to our people and it builds that, that's how it builds, you know, about coming back home. You know, I want my grandkids and those ones that haven't been born yet to know and that way they understand who they are and where they came from. So that way when they come here, they're able to come and visit and they're able to come and pick and they're able to see it. And maybe they might get something out of it too. <laughs>